This video was brought to you by the Slide Bean Agency. Get the design team behind Slide Bean to redo your slides. Go to slidebean.com slash agency and get $50 off on your first project. When we hear about Tesla, we think of cars, but the company is much more than Falcon doors and crazy trucks. Tesla aims to revolutionize how we see sustainable living. In July of 2020, it became the most valuable car manufacturer in the world. But is it? We're gonna do things differently today. To help us learn more about living day to day with green tech, we partnered with Ben Sullins, a sustainable living expert who goes to great lengths to test and live with the newest green tech available. And yes, of course, he test drives Teslas, which is awesome. So this special episode of Forensics will cover Tesla's rise to the top, as well as its vision for the future. If you wanna learn more about Tesla with an excellent analysis, be sure to check out Ben's channel. This is Company Forensics, Tesla. The origins. Even after GM destroyed all of its EV1s, the first mass-produced electric vehicle in the world, and the US automotive industry had turned its back towards EVs, engineers Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tarpening still believed in them. So much so that they formed Tesla Motors on July 1st, 2003. After Ian Wright joined in 2004, the three looked for venture capital, and then they met Elon Musk, who was seriously attracted to the idea and invested 6.5 million of the total 7.5 million that they raised in their Series A fund. Musk also became chairman of the board of directors and appointed Eberhard as CEO and added J.B. Straubel as CTO. But in reality, he took control of the company. He first aimed to create luxury electric vehicles for early adopters and eventually affordable EVs for a bigger market. With the first project, the Roadster, he focused on component design, styling, and the carbon fiber polymer body. But Musk and Eberhard clashed so much that eventually the board of directors asked Eberhard to step down in August of 2007. Also, the founders argued so much that a lawsuit ensued. A revolving door of CEOs followed Everhard's departure. Michael Marx, then Ziv Drory, and months later, Musk became CEO. And this all happened within the span of a year. Meanwhile, the company was burning money like crazy, even with funding from names like JP Morgan and Musk himself investing chunks of his cash. In early 2008, Musk fired 10% of the staff, and still by the end of that year, Tesla was close to bankruptcy. But as Christmas came along, Musk managed managed to come up with $40 million to remain afloat. Somehow, with all these difficulties, Tesla shipped out 147 roadsters by 2009. Then, Daimler AG invested $50 million in the company for less than 10%. This investment, in the words of Musk himself, saved Tesla. But let's give Tesla some credit. The company clawed through one of the worst economic crises in decades, selling luxury electric roadsters. In June of 2009, Tesla received 465 $5 million in low interest loans from the government to help develop electric cars. In May 2013, Tesla repaid this loan nine years ahead of schedule. Not bad at all. With this financing, Tesla went public in June 2010 at $17 per share. The IPO raised over $200 million for the company. By 2014, Tesla already had half of the market value of Ford, and it wouldn't stop. Let's talk about cars. The Roadster was originally a Lotus Elise glider, complete car with no engines, as part of an agreement that began in 2005 and ran up to 2011. But what should have been a smooth transition from Lotus to Tesla was really a headache. Musk changed the base cars so much that by the end, the original car and the finished Roadster shared only 7% of the parts. So much work ballooned costs, a big reason for those financial struggles at first. But the Roadster surprised the world. EVs were small, gray, and dull. Instead, this car was a $100,000 luxury red convertible. Sales were modest with around 2,500 units sold in total, but it was a step in the right direction. The next car, the Model S, had it all. A sedan with an estimated range of 407 miles, the highest of any electric vehicle, and excellent acceleration and handling. It first rolled out in 2012 and was a critical success. So much so that by 2013, Tesla had presented its first quarterly profits. But 
but reports hinted that Tesla had cut costs and rushed to get the Model S into the market. Staff within Tesla knew that some batteries were faulty and leaked coolant, but still shipped them. In the end, two vehicles caught fire in 2013 after they hit debris, and a third car caught fire while charging. Yeah, that's the stuff that you don't want to have. Though Tesla's stock dropped by around 20%, Musk didn't recall the cars. Instead, he ensured his cars were five times safer than any competitor, and even hinted that the lower stock price was excellent, as high stock prices were distracting for them. Tesla then ventured into the SUV market with the Model X in 2015, but the Falcon doors, which look fantastic, were prone to jamming, and the company delayed production to fix them. Now, the Model X wasn't a cheaper car, competing with brands like Porsche, Land Rover, Mercedes-Benz, and BMW. But in its first year, the Model X ranked seventh amongst all plug-in hybrid in sales, and critics praised its performance and overall design. The doors, well, I guess they're up for debate. Tesla's sales had gone from 2,500 Roadsters to 100,000 Model X units sold by 2018. The Model S reached 200,000 units sold that same year, making it the second electric vehicle to reach that number, behind the much older Nissan Leaf. And then came the Model 3. Musk announced the compact luxury sedan with much hype, but once again, production issues delayed the launch. Critics and experts torched Tesla. It seemed that Tesla was always a quarter away from achieving their goals, operating in a perpetual cycle of hype and delay. So once again, the stock took a hit, dropping by around 23%. But Musk's hype persisted. When reservations opened for the Model 3, 132,000 bookings came through in the first 24 hours. This platform was also the base for the Model Y, a compact utility vehicle that promises to dominate yet another electric vehicle sector. Yes, we can say that Teslas are unique. Their design and their handling sets them apart. They have faster charging times and smaller battery packages. But how is that enough to be the most valuable car company in the world? Record highs. In July 2020, Tesla reached a $208 billion valuation, officially surpassing Toyota as the most valuable car company in the world. But how? From Tesla's stock, which now hovers above $1,000, sometimes reaching values of $1,500 per stock. The thing is, experts claim that investors treat Tesla as if it were a tech company and overvalue its stock. The only detail is the company isn't really tech for now. Add to this that cars only generate so much money, and the automotive market has its series of challenges, one of which for Tesla has been revenue. Look at Toyota, the Japanese company has brought more than $200 billion in revenue for years now. Tesla has struggled to bring in revenue and profit consistently. And then we have to talk about Elon Musk, that controversial character whose antics cost Tesla's stock value to go up and down, sometimes wiping out billions of dollars in valuation, and sometimes adding billions of dollars. Just the thought, what would happen to Tesla if Musk left tomorrow? So yes, Tesla is the most valuable car company in the world today, but it has been so for less than a year, while others have been so for a longer time, with challenges like expanding into other market segments dominated by gas vehicles and a volatile stock, one key advantage they have is that Tesla is much more than just cars. Powerwall as a stepping stone. In 2015, Tesla announced the Powerwall, a battery system to provide energy for homes, be it as a backup or as a means to save money. It covers most appliances with its five kilowatt supply, but if you need to dry your clothes, this might not be the best option. And here's where solar energy comes into play. In 2016, Tesla acquired a solar panel manufacturer called Solar City for $2.6 billion to create a seamlessly integrated battery and solar power product that looks beautiful your car, your house, and backup power all hooked up to solar energy. But the merger has met some opposition. Some critics say that both Tesla and SolarCity rely heavily on investors and the government for cash. Even shareholders have disagreed with Musk over the merger. Now, I wanted to know more about this path they're taking, and here's where Ben comes in. Certainly the energy side of Tesla, which are where those products fall, the solar roof, the solar panels, the power walls, um, are the less sexy ones, of course. Um, Tesla or Elon did say, I believe last year was going to be the year of the solar roof. Uh, I've done a lot of analysis on it and the price has come down tremendously. And now, at least in California, we are seeing quite a bit of these new solar roof installations. Of course, Tesla took over Solar City, so that's how they have tons of solar panel installations. Um, and then the power wall is actually where I think it's a really, really interesting product for all that is that is has mass appeal because uh here in the u.s anyways depending on where you live 
you have these time of use ratings where you can actually pay different prices for electricity at different times a day. If you can get a power wall, you can actually do an arbitrage of that. So you kind of buy low and, and sell high. And so I think the power wall with some, you know, state incentives and, and subsidies and things like that kind of pushing them are going to be a tremendous hit. And you're seeing a lot of uh, utilities even get involved with this whole concept of virtual power plants. So I think it's maybe early days, but I still have high hopes that that's going to be probably Tesla's biggest product line in the future. Which actually connects to my last question um, on the ins insanity that we've been seeing in the stock price. Yeah, the stock price is a weird thing. My guess, and that's all you, anyone can really say here, uh, is that people are looking at the future of all these other automakers saying we're going electric, right? Volkswagen, Ford, a lot of big automakers are co really committing to electric, putting, you know, I think Volkswagen was shutting down like a third of their factories and converting them all to electric. So things like that are going to really drive this whole movement. And Tesla makes the best electric cars in the world. It's not even, it's objectively true. It's not even a, a you know, a, a fanboy kind of thing. That's like just how it is. So I think when, when you look at that from an investor standpoint, you have to think, where is the auto industry going? Who is the leader pushing it ahead, you know, even further than, than anyone else? And it's Tesla. No one even comes close to them in, in that regard. They're selling the future. And, and that is what everyone else is trying to play catch up with. This is why no one really has a compelling product in terms of specs that, that can compete with Tesla. You know, I mean, the Porsche Taycan, I, I drove it. I spent a day with it. It was incredible. It also was a quarter million dollar sports car. So you know it's going to be incredible, right? So I think just... A lot of the stock price, a lot of the 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 infl not inflation, but the trajectory, the increase is based on the future and what people think Tesla is going to do. So long as they don't kind of you know trip over their own feet, so to speak. So once again, the most valuable car manufacturer in the world for now, and it's not just cars. It's plans to include total solutions for green living. Plus, the company doesn't seem to slow down in what is one of the worst crises. And if you look back, this is nothing new. Tesla began by selling luxury cars in the 2008 crisis, and look where they are now. So is Tesla's future just hype, or is it for real? What do you think? Drop us a comment and let us know, and take a look at that big red bright button just right here, and press it if you haven't. See you next week.